Whereas the Japanese case is more about continuity. There's less, less in the sense of the dramatic transition. Now, according to the Japanese text, Islam was brought by the, by the nine Malis, the nine friends of God, proselytizers of Islam. And the Wali sites in Java, I don't know whether you're of course, you, 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 you go to Ziara and you want to see that in We're fine with you. Excellent. Okay. Because they are very, very interesting. Let me see if I can get this thing to work. Um, okay. Now, this is the grave of supposedly one of the earliest, uh, in fact, the oldest of the Wallis. This is the grave in Surabaya, Sunan Amtel and his wife. Now, uh, one of the things to be noticed here is the absolute simplicity of the grave. Now, Mark was asking whether these graves are uninscribed. They're covered, of course, as an act of um, piety. Uh, there's no, no chunkle. A lot of the Muslim graves of Java have a chunkle over them. Uh, so, uh, but these are not in the in some way. And, uh, and they are in the, in the mosque, next to the mosque. Um, Sorry, this is trivial, perhaps. But in the middle there are, are those filled with the little pebbles that you can take away flowers. Oh, those are flowers. 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 Um, um, and, and this is actually the gateway to those graves, which is probably probably the 16th century gateway. These are the, this is a great staircase up to the grave of Sunangiri uh, near the sea. Long, long staircase to the top. If you're going up there, have lots of coins in your pocket because you'll be besieged by beggars all the way up. And then it's good business. There's a lot of business there. Uh, the graves are guarded over by Jurukunchi here. These, these men are sitting in front of the graves of Sunangiri's uh, children. Um, the traditional date of the death of Sunangiri is 1506, um, but it's very hard to confirm those kinds of things. Um, the the Chungkub itself, you can make out, it's very hard to make out because of the way the, the flash bounces off of this, this, this is the gateway side. And also on either side, two nagas. Um, and uh, it's all carved, wooden, and gilded. So two nagas on the side. Uh, again, the pre-Islamic motif. Uh, and then inside, um, it's extraordinary medallion. This is carved in wood inside. Um, and, and gilded. And oh, it's hard to make out. These are the motifs of the, 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 the cloud, cloud and mountain motif you find in many of these early graves, especially in Chittagong. Very likely of, uh, of Chinese inspiration. I don't know. What I, this was taken several years ago. I went to, to Brasil. When these things happen in Java, uh, went to Brasil, went to the grave of Sunangiri, and, um, um, and went inside, saw, saw these wonderful carvings, and I came back out and I said to the, uh, to, to the Jiro Kunchi, these guys, I said, Can I, I take some photographs inside? They said, No, you're not allowed to take photographs. <coughs> uh, and, um, which is standard. And then uh, the, the, the guy on the, on, on the right there with the horizontal stripes said, he said, you've got some connection with Sunangiri, haven't you? And it just so happens I have a, I have, I have a crease which is supposed to be made by Sunangiri. But I said to him, I'm a teacher, I teach history, I always listen to my students. He said, no. And I said, you've got a connection. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I have this crease. It's called Kiai Wali. It's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be made by Sunangiri for his daughter. It was handed down to a Radhan Damang eventually. I wrote Sasila to Radhan Damang and Makanagara who gave it to me. Oh, he's taking pictures. <laughs> so there you are. The connection meant 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 um, There were these wonderful antique, um, uh, wonderful antique uh, uh, carvings inside the place. This is uh, the Katmandu, the grave of Sunan Um Played a, a major role in founding the Matar Kingdom, according to the legends. Uh, so another one of the great uh, great water sites. Um, Sorry, it's a bit out of focus, but some of the carvings, this is actually new, this was done in, in Sakarno's time, but, um, but some of the old carvings were kept. So, so I think it's great. And then the Chirabo on the grave of Sunan Jati, who died around 1570. This man's extremely important. The legends say that he was born in Hassa, so that Islamic said, have you seen him over this much? Um, but when the, when the Portuguese attacked Hassa, he went to Mecca, performed uh, a pilgrimage, came back in 1524 to Damak, the Islamic Islamic kingdom on the north coast, and then was sent off with an army to conquer West Java for Islam. One of the, one of the, one of the myths you will encounter if you look at the Islamic stuff is the idea that Indonesia was Islamized peacefully. Right? Now, it was Islamized peacefully in the sense that there was no foreign army from outside Indonesia that came. But in lots of local places in Indonesian kingdoms, which was already
really Islamic, come from the one next door. So that, that was actually spread in Islam by violence. You know, Guna Mujati, like West Java, uh, drew the Islamic Lord out of what was known Jakarta, took over, established the kingdom of Banten, and then later moved and established the kingdom of Chirabon, where he was buried. This is also the grave. Uh, that's another grave down below. One of the things to notice here is that it's an ongoing motif. And that's all the Chinese plates that get in the walls here. It's part of the, part of the evidence um, for the uh, Roman Chinese. Also, around the bottom there, the Delft tiles. Here in the middle of the this is where we're sitting in Japan. Of course, the Delft tiles here have a lot of Chinese plates everywhere else. Interesting cross cultural uh, thing is that the in this palace, there's also a lot of um